problems with two-step equations. What we're going to do next is discuss how to solve word problems that have multiple steps. Okay, so this first example, we have 331 students went on a field trip. Six buses were filled, and seven students had to travel in cars. So in addition to their six buses, we had seven more students that were in cars. How many students were on each bus? So first we have to write an equation, and then we solve the equation. So when we're writing the equation, we have a total of how many students. The total is going to equal the buses, however many kids are on the buses, plus the cars. But we know exactly seven students ran in, er, rode in cars, so I'm going to put seven for the cars. And now we don't know how many people were on buses, but we know they took six buses, so it's going to be six times the number of kids on the bus, and the total is 331. So my equation that I need to solve is 331 equals 6 times b equals, or sorry, plus... So that's part of my answer. Now I have to find B. B equals the number of kids on the bus. So I'm going to solve this inequality by working outside in. So I do opposite of plus 7 is minus 7. So I subtract 7 for both sides. When I do that, I get 324 equals 6 times B. Then I have to divide by 6. 324 divided by 6 will give me 54. So my final answer is 54 kids. So you need both parts of that to answer the question. In this next example, Elijah had $24 to spend on seven pencils. After buying them, he still had $10. How much did each pencil cost? Okay, so the total amount of money that he has is $24. Okay, and he has to buy seven pencils. We don't know how much each of those seven pencils cost, so we just write seven times however much those pencils cost. However, he still had $10 left over, so you can add on the $10, because whatever the pencils cost, and then adding on the $10 is going to be a, his total amount of money that he started with. So we add on the $10. So I'm just going to write plus 10. So the equation I'm solving is 24 equals 7p plus 10. Now I need to solve for p. p equals an amount of money. How much per pencil? Okay, so the first step, opposite of plus 10 is minus 10. Work outside in. If you do it to one side of the equation, you've got to do it to the other side. So minus 10. 24 minus 10 is 14 equals 7 times p. 7 times p, the opposite of times, is divide. So we divide by 7. Divide by 7. So 14 divided by 7 is 2. So that is p. So p equals $2. And that's your final answer. You need both parts. So for this third example, the sum of three consecutive numbers is 72. What is the smallest of those numbers? So this one is a big one. We just need to find the smallest number. So three consecutive numbers means numbers in a row. And we know that the total is 72. So 72 is going to equal three numbers in a row.
Okay, so how would I write that? Well, one number could be x. That could be our first number. Or you could call it a or whatever. So x, and then we're going to add the next number. So what is the number after x? Well, it's x plus 1. That's going to be number one, no, one number after x. So x plus 1. And then we're going to add the third number in a row, which would be x plus 2. So what we actually have is x plus x plus 1 plus x plus 2. So we can simplify 72 equals 1, 2, 3 x's, so 3x, plus 1 plus 2 is 3. So my equation on this one is actually going to be 72 equals 3x plus 3. And that's what I'm going to solve. So I solve the same way. The opposite of plus 3, minus 3, minus 3. So 72 minus 3 is 69 equals 3 times x. The opposite of times, 3 times, we have to divide by 3 to get the x by itself, the opposite of multiply. So I divide by 3. 69 divided by 3 is actually going to give me a 23, and that is x. Well, we said x was our smallest number, and then we added numbers onto it. So since x is our smallest number, then to find the smallest of those numbers, x equals 23. Now, if I asked you to find all of the numbers, then you would have to take 23 and find, you know, x plus 1, which would be 24, and then 25. Those would be the three consecutive numbers. However, in this case, all I wanted you to do was find the smallest number, which is 23. In this next example, you bought a magazine for $5, and you bought four erasers. You spent a total of $25. How much did each eraser cost? Okay, so set up a problem and then solve. So you spent a total. The total is going to equal something and it's going to equal the magazine plus the four erasers. Okay, so the total is $25. The magazine cost you $5 plus the four erasers cost you, well, we don't know. That's the whole point. We want to know how much the erasers cost you, so 4E. So that makes your equation 25 equals 5 plus 4 times E. And now we have to find E and we have to find that price. It's going to be an amount of money. Okay, so solving. We have 5 plus 4e. So we want to get this 5 away from the 4e. So i got to do the opposite of a plus 5. So I subtract 5 from both sides. 25 minus 5 is 20 equals 4 times e. So I divide by 4, because the opposite of multiply is divide. Divide by 4, and E equals 5. So what does that mean? That means each eraser cost $5. And that is your final answer. You can set these problems up in different ways, but sometimes if you write it out and understand what the problem says first, like what I did right here, it helps you to put your numbers in where you need to be. So those are your notes over word problems with two-step equations and how to form them and solve them. Go through some practice problems. Make sure that you can do these. Sometimes they're a little bit tricky, so you have to think about them a little bit, and then you'll be ready for your quiz over this material.